In education, we often talk about the goal being college and career readiness. Jamie Cassup's gonna take us through why he feels like we're selling our students short when we aim that low. Welcome to Focus on K-12, EdTech and the Education Experience. I'm your host, Doug Conopelko, Education Strategist at CDWG. So let's dive in as we focus on K-12. My name is Jamie Kassop, or Jaime Kassop. I am the former Chief Education Evangelist at Google, where I served for 15 years. I wasn't always the Education Evangelist. It was a title that was given to me a couple years later. Uh, launched Google Apps for Education that we now call G Suite into the university space back in 2006. Launched uh, Google Apps for Education into K-12 when we signed the state of Oregon. And I launched Chromebooks into education back in 2011 when it wasn't supposed to be launched in education. I also um, started and launched the Google for Education Transformation Center, uh, which was this big hub of resources to kind of focus on this idea that it's not about transforming education through technology, but about transforming education through everything, right? So your, your organization, your culture, your learning models, your professional development, the funding models that you use, the whole package, it's all of this and providing resources for educators and administrators on that site. So recently left Google back in the middle of a pandemic, which is always a good time to leave. Uh, and I am working on a number of projects. Some of them I can't talk about yet, but with a number of different types of organizations focused on higher education, the future of work and building end to end uh, K-12 education systems. So I'm excited about the work that I'm doing, especially since it's all involved around equity and access and diversity issues in the education space. Yeah, so Jamie, we've connected a few times before. We've talked about, you know, what problem do you want to solve being a really key lever uh, to use with students, especially in that K-12 space. Uh, we've talked a little bit about education as a disruptor of poverty, right, which connects really uh, and hits home for you a lot. Uh, really passionate. People can uh, go and see your talks on both of those uh, really all over the place. But lately what we've connected on is this idea of college and career, Right, that we talk about a lot at K-12, and right. you've got some new ideas on that. So talk, to, take me through some of that. Yeah, so it's there's a couple of things, right? So we have to understand that we are now entering what I call the digitalization age. And we have been entering it for quite some time, but what we need to understand is that we are at the very, 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 very beginning of this. We, uh, we are in caveman days when it comes to digitalization. And did, by digitalization, I mean everything that has to do with computer science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, AR, VR, automation, robotics, the whole package. And we are at the very beginning of this. As an example, right before I left Google, Google had a breakthrough in quantum computing, right? And the breakthrough that they had was so su substantial that the, the pandemic kind of covered it up. We never talked about it. But the breakthrough in quantum computing was, as, an ex as, as, a, as a way to illustrate it, is if you took an equation, if you took one of those mathematical equations that just spins for days on end and fed it to the world's most powerful supercomputer, it would take that supercomputer 10,000 years to process. Uh, the breakthrough that Google had was that they did it in 300 seconds. Now, they didn't do it on a Chromebook or a MacBook Pro, right? They used a, a whole bunch of different machinery and data centers and scientists and lab codes, but one day it will be done and, you know, on a on a MacBook Pro. And because we have to understand that we're at the very, very beginning of this, technology is gonna be uh, expediting at a pace that we can't even imagine. So that all to say that this idea that if all we're doing is getting students jobs, right? This, this, this mindset of college or career ready, like that we're preparing students for jobs. My question is one, is that right? And two, is that the best we can do, right? Because what we have to think about is that these jobs that we're preparing students for aren't gonna exist for very long, especially those for black and brown students in vulnerable communities, right? The pandemic, you can see impacting uh, communities of color harder than any other community. You can also see that digitalization is impacting students of color or communities of color 
more than any other organization because of all the manual labor. And I think that we're on a hockey stick growth when it comes to replacing a lot of that manual labor. So even this idea of preparing them for careers doesn't make sense given the fact that if you prepare someone for a good technology career, in a couple of years, that job won't exist because it will be automated. So what I think we should do is this, isn't to shoot so low. This idea that we're preparing kids for jobs isn't enough for me. What I want to do is prepare kids to be change makers, to be policy makers, to be entrepreneurs, to be inventors, to be scientists, so that they can take advantage of all this digitalization that is happening and the fact that we're at the very beginning of this. I see this as nothing more than the most amazing opportunity that we've had. You know, the only other time that this has happened, as far as I can tell, is fire, when fire was invented, and when electricity was invented. This is, this is one of those times in humankind where it's not about preparing kids for jobs, it's about preparing them with the skills that they need to take advantage of the tools that are available so that they can be scientists and entrepreneurs and community leaders and change makers. And, and that's what's gonna change our communities because even if we get every black and brown kid in Hell's Kitchen where I grew up a job, that's gonna have an economic impact, but it's not really gonna change things. If we really wanna change things, we need people who look like me in positions of power and influence and wealth. So how do we take these ideas, right? The digitalization that you said we're just kind of at the at the very tip of, right? The beginning of the hockey stick of this digitalization. How do we take that and then fold it into the education system or rewrite the education system around it to support moving forward, you know, not just to college and careers, right? As you said, kind of sell, selling ourselves short, but how do we propel that forward into that future? Yes, well, let's start with this idea that, you know, I, I often talk about is, because people like in my position don't usually have this point of view, which is that there is actually nothing wrong with the education system, right? Education system's fine. Education system is better than it's ever been. The education system produces more high school graduates and more college graduates than it ever has in the history of the world, right? Mm -hmm. The content that we teach in schools is 10 times stronger than it was 40 years ago or 20 years ago, right? So. It's not that education is broken, it, it's that the world has changed and we are at the very beginning of this change. And so for me, it's not about fixing education or rewriting education, it's about understanding that future, understanding what's coming, understanding what's out there, and then asking ourselves, what is the best model that we can build for this future, right? Just like our forefathers in education did 150 years ago, they built an amazing model for the industrial revolution. What model are we going to stand up and build for the digitalization age? What is it that we're going to do? And if you look at it that way, it's not that education is broken and you suck at your job. It's that you're good at your job. And what we need to do is take those great ideas and bring education to the next level to, to deal with this new age that's coming. For, and so if you look at it that way, this is the first thing that should pop in your head if you understand that future. Huh, let me look at all the subjects and things that we're teaching students. You know what? We're teaching students things that machines can do much better. It's probably a good time to stop doing that. What can we be teaching them? Oh, well, in this new world, what seems to make sense is what I call human skills. Let's double down on human skills. We, you know, we have other words for them. We used to call them 21st century skills. I don't use that phrase because one, we're 21 years into the 21st century. And two, I feel like it's this mental thing where we tell students, oh, you need these skills for the 21st century as, is, as if the 21st century is way down there in the future. And it's not, it's, it's here right now. So I think what we can do is identify things that machines can do better. Let's not teach students those things and then let's focus on these human skills, problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, the ability to learn, creativity, or whatever combination of those skills you need. So when my six-year-old goes to school every day, I could care less what the subjects are. It, you can teach her any subject you want. What I care more about is, is she building those skills? Is she learning how to problem solve in world history class? Not that she's taking world history as a six-year-old, but you get the point. <laughs> Is she learning how to collaborate? Is she learning how to problem solve? Is she learning 
how to be creative? Is she, is she mastering creativity? Because those human skills are going to be the skills that are needed for this future. Right. And those are what's going to apply to anything. Whereas what we were teaching before, right, which really centered around consistency and conformity, that's what we don't need, right? Because we can get consistency and conformity from machines, right? From right. computers. If you're, if you're at, in even basic things, like if, if you're making a student memorize what happened on December 7th, 1941, because you want them to be able to recite that back to you on a test, then what we should really be thinking about, because machines can answer that question, what we should be doing instead is teaching them why December 7th, 1941 happened. Right. And, and there, so it's not about remembering dates. It's not about remembering facts or figures. It's about understanding the why, understanding the critical thinking component of that, understanding to get in depth on those things. It's having real deep discussions in classes if you're in upper classes like high school around why these things happen and what does it mean and how can you use this information to predict the future. Those are the types of skills. So that's one. So you know, if you want to trigger me, call them soft skills. Um, they're not, they're absolutely essential, critical. I could care less about any other skill. So that's one. And the second thing is that this digitalization thing that we're talking about, um, our students don't even know the basics of it, right? Ask any, to take a 16 year old, ask them how fiber works. How does Zoom work, right? They don't know. And, and we've given this generation a pass. We've lied to them. We call them digital natives. We call them digital citizens. We, we say, you were just born with this technology. You just naturally know how to use it. And they don't. They don't even know how to use the basic stuff. They don't even know how to search. If you're typing a question mark into a search bar, you're a terrible searcher, right? And so this idea that they know how to use these tools because they were born in them is the most ridiculous idea I've heard in education in a very long time. And so let's take a step back and really focus on digital skills. What are those digital skills? How, just at the very basic level, a Stanford study uh, from 2019, 80% of high school kids couldn't pull out the fake story out of four stories presented to them, right? That, like, let's just start with the basic stuff. And then let's start with how does the internet work? How does the computer work? How does, how does, why is 10 gig speed faster than one gig speed? What does that mean? What is a gig? I mean, literally basic things because whatever solutions our students are going to be developing to solving the problems that they're passionate about, it will 100% guaranteed have a digital element associated with it. Doesn't matter what the job is, doesn't matter what the problem is, doesn't matter what they wanna build or where they go work, digitalization is going to be part of that. And they don't understand it and we've been giving them a pass. We, we, just, we, just, we haven't been teaching them anything. Right. I think it's so amazing how many of those things that exist around us, right, and that exist around our students and around our own children that we really don't understand, they don't understand, and we're just sort of saying no one needs to understand that, but obviously somebody does because somebody had to create it, right? Somebody has to maintain it. Someone's going to have to iterate on it as we move through the digitalization to get us to that next step. Right. Hey, look, I'm, I'm in my downtown studio in Phoenix, Arizona. And if the problem I'm trying to solve is to get to the airport, which I haven't been on an airplane since February, not complaining, <laughs> but if I'm trying to get to the airport, I'm coming up with a solution to solve that problem. And I don't know that cars exist. What kinds of solutions would I come up with? I'm going to come up with what I think are brilliant solutions about how to walk there and how long it will take me. I'm even going to be able to predict how long it will take me to walk there. I will be able to predict what time I need to leave here to get to the airport. I might even come up with a solution that comes up with the best sidewalks that have shade or the, the least likely to hit, get hit by a car while I walk to the airport. I'm going to come up with amazing solutions. But if I don't know cars exist, am I coming up with the best solution? So digitalization and understanding how this stuff works. Like I said the word quantum computing before. How many people understand what quantum computing is? So if you don't know what quantum computing is, how are you ever going to come up with a solution to a problem that we're facing? Right. Well, Jamie, I feel like we could always talk for hours and hours, but thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for sharing your work, for your passion, uh, and everything that you bring to education. Thank you very much for having me. It's been fun.
Thanks for joining us today on Focus on K-12 EdTech and the Education Experience. If you enjoyed today's show, please feel free to like, subscribe, and click the little bell so that you get notified whenever we post a new episode. If you have an idea for a future guest or just want to talk about the show, either post something in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter at dconopelko. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time as we focus on K-12.